Um, how's everyone feeling? We're good? It's Friday? Sweet. Okay. So welcome to the kettlebell class tonight. So like I was saying earlier, I messed up the schedule earlier this week. I did a body weight class on Monday. Should have been the kettlebell class. So I'm doing the kettlebell class tonight instead. But next week I'll be back on track with the kettlebell class on Monday, strength and conditioning Tuesday, and then body weight on Friday. So we will get started with our warm up. <clears throat> Starting with that head and neck, looking up and down. Keeping those shoulders relaxed. We're here for about 10. And when you're done, you'll bring it back to center and we'll just drop the ear to the shoulder. Again, keeping those shoulders relaxed. And hang out here on one side. We'll do half circles to the front. Just three in each direction. to center and big arm circle. <clears throat> 10 back and then 10 forward. Keep those arms straight. Change direction if you haven't already. Couple more and then we're going to open it front and back. So we're trying to look for that nice stretch through the back as the arms come to the front and then a stretch through the chest as we open the arms. And now we're going to open it to the side. So with a little bit of a rotation. Good. One more on each side. Back to center. For the elbows, so arms out to the side, we're going to do some elbow circles. So the hands are coming in towards the face and then a full extension on the way out. So don't short change that range of motion. You're going to do 10 in each direction. Good. And when you're done that, we'll do big wrist circles. Again, 10 in each direction. Making these as big as you can. Hopefully your wrists are cracking as much as mine. All right. Final roll downs. So tucking the chin, starting with the head, rolling down one vertebrae at a time. Knees are soft or bent. When your hands get to the floor, just take a deep breath in. And then you're going to slowly roll up, keeping the knees soft, tucking the tailbone, rolling up one vertebrae at a time. You're going to do that one more time. You can take your time on the way down or the way up if you like and just let gravity pull those arms down, getting a nice stretch through the back. This time when you get to the floor, you're going to walk your hands to one side, <clears throat> push into the floor. You can keep the knees bent or you can straighten them. But you're actively pushing into the floor here. And then you'll go to the other side. And then back to center and roll up. Big hip circles. That's 
it. Let's do one more in this direction and then we'll change, take it the other way. One more. Good. And ankles, point and flex. Big point, big flex. And then let's do some big circles. Ten in each direction. Other way. Other side. Point and flex. And circles when you're ready. Pointing the toes as the foot goes back and then flexing the foot as you come to the front. Change direction if you haven't already. Good. <clears throat> All right, we're going to bring it down to the floor for a little bit of prep work. So we're going to come into the downward dog position and we're going to shift from a downward dog to plank. So let's all just come into that downward dog position. <clears throat> Back is straight, so this is the most important piece of the puzzle here. You want your neck to stay in line with the rest of your spine. So that back stays nice and straight. You're lifting that tailbone up towards the ceiling. The legs are as straight as you can get them and your arms are straight. So from here, we're just gonna shift the weight from the feet to the hands. Seeing if you can bring the weight under the first knuckles of your hands and then sending it back to the feet. If that feels okay, you can try to come into a full plank. You may have to adjust your feet, the position of your feet and your hands here, maybe further apart. But if you can go from that downward dog into a high plank, hold it for a beat and then send it back. So just do a few more here. I wanted us to do 10, but if you've been practicing and doing it, we might do a few more than 10. But keep those arms nice and straight the whole time. Do one more. And then we'll come to standing. Whew. Good. <clears throat> For our diagonal stretch. So feet starting under the hips. Stepping one foot back. Both knees are bent. If your right leg is back, the right arm crosses over to that left shoulder. Level one, you're just reaching back to touch the back of the leg, or you can circle the arm. And remember, you're squeezing your glute here for five. Other side. Good. Yep. Nice. Good, Thomas. <clears throat> so squeezing for the entire time. Five on each side, and then we'll take it back to those um, downward dog to plank for 10. If you can't bring it all the way into plank, then you just bring it as far as you can. <clears throat> Keep lifting that tailbone. Keep that back nice and straight. So 
Brace those abs as you come into plank. Oh yeah, that looks good. Smooth. Nice. Keep pulling those shoulders down away from the ears. Good. And then we'll do the diagonal stretch again. Last time. <clears throat> Squeeze the glute. Really open up that hip. See if you can reach back a little bit further this time. Now that you're warmed up. Five on each. do two rounds of our lizard stretch. We're going to do our uh, glute lifts and we have a shoulder stretch. So starting with that lizard, bringing one foot forward, hands on the inside of the foot, back knee is on the floor or straight. Front foot is firmly connected to the floor so you're applying pressurely if you're applying pressure evenly throughout that entire front foot. So you're just going to hang out here first. Keep that spine nice and straight. Enjoy the stretch. And then if you want, you can start pushing through those back toes, forward and back. And then maybe change it into some circles. Five in each direction. And then we'll go to the other side. So setting it up, getting that nice stretch through the hip. When you're ready, you can push through those back toes, forward and back. So you'll get a nice little foot stretch through that back foot as you do this. And then when you're ready, adding those circles, And then we're going to stay on the floor oh. for some glute lifts. So uh, level one, knees bent, back on the floor. You're going to find that neutral pelvis. And then we're just lifting the hips, squeezing the glutes at the top, bringing it back down. So if that feels okay, you can bring it up. So that you are, your hands are behind you, chest is open, so you're pressing into those arms, you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, you want to keep squeezing those shoulder blades together as you lift the hips. Thinking about driving the knees over the toes, so whichever version you're doing, you're here for 10. So you're thinking hinge here, so those hips are hinging as they're coming down. Good. And then we're gonna stay on the floor, but this time we're coming onto our belly. You're gonna bring one arm straight out beside you. So you're thinking about keeping that armpit connected to the floor, and you're actively pushing into the floor here. So your hand is pushing into the floor, arm is pushing into the floor. If your right arm is extended, you're going to take your left foot and bring it behind you as you press into the floor with that arm. 
See if you can go back and forth for five. And then on your last rep, you're gonna hold it. Two or three breaths. And when you've had enough, we'll go to the other side, same thing. Actively pushing into the floor and then bringing that opposite leg behind. Holding it. And release. All right, let's go through that again. Lizard, glute lifts, shoulder stretch. So just taking a second to set it up. Feel free to explore if you want to make little minor adjustments through the hips, feet, legs, just to see how everything is feeling. Add those circles, five in each direction. And going to the other side when you're ready. Staying down on the floor when you're done that for our glute lifts, so choosing your level. <laughs> squeezing those shoulder blades together before you even lift those hips. Keep squeezing as the hips come up, then you hinge down. For 10. And then it's our shoulder stretch, but this time for the shoulder stretch, instead of having the arms straight out beside us, we're going to bring it up on an angle. <clears throat> so like two o'clock, if we were on a clock, same thing though, we're pushing into the floor, armpit stays connected and retaining that foot behind. for five reps, and then you're gonna hold your last rep. And then go to the other side. Push into the floor. Active stretch. All right, and release. Okay, grab a drink if you need it. I'll explain what we have coming up. Um, we're going to look at windmills tonight. So how we're going to do this is we're going to do three sets on each side, about five reps per set. I'm going to put the timer on again like I don't want you to think about this is a high intensity interval training session just the timer is there just to keep us on pace and so that we don't go over so the timer is going to be set for 45 seconds of work and then 15 seconds of rest within that 45 seconds of work you're going to just do as many windmills as you can like no more than five um, and then we'll go to the other side but let me just review the windmill before we get started For those of us who need a refresher. So the feet are this position. So if I'm going to be supporting my kettlebell with my right hand, 
My right foot is facing forward. So my toes are pointing forward. My left foot, the toes are turned out. So it's not completely perpendicular, but it's like just maybe 45 degrees. But you can play with this. This may look different on everyone, depending on your anatomy, how everything is set up. So my weight is up here. I push my hip out to the side. I'm always gonna keep my eyes up at the weight because this is a safety feature. You just wanna always know where the weight is in case you have to get out of the way of the weight. So my eyes are up, I push my hip out. Now from here, it's a hinge. I'm gonna hinge my hips back and I'm gonna come down just as far as my flexibility will allow me. Some of us will get to the floor, some of us may only get here. And then from there, we're actively pushing up here with the arm and we're pulling with this hip. So we're pushing and pulling and that's what's bringing us up. So again, we hinge, eyes up at the weight, or sorry, we push, eyes up at the weight and then we hinge back, come up. Just try a couple of those on each side, just with weight or without. We're gonna do three rounds, like I said. You can stay with the one weight for the full three rounds, or if you wanna move up in weight as we go, you can do that. Good, good. Yeah, ideally, I mean, if you can keep the legs straight as you do this, fantastic. Oh, nice, Maggie. But uh, if you have to bend the knees, that's quite all right, too. Okay, cool. So what will happen is, 45 seconds of work, right side, left side. We're gonna do that three times. Then we're gonna rest for about a minute. And then we're gonna move into kettlebell swings, working in that same interval pace, 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. So that will get our heart rates up. Um, within the 45 seconds of work when we're doing those kettlebell swings, I would like you to try to hit 25 reps. So you'll do 25 swings. We're gonna do it four times. So we'll get 100 swings in. So it's gonna be windmill right, windmill left, three times, one minute rest, and then we have four minutes of swings every minute on the minute for four minutes with like a 45 second working interval. We're good? We don't know, okay. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so take your time with the windmills. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, certainly you don't have to rush it. I want you to pay attention here. Okay, so we're gonna get started in 15 seconds. So to get the weight overhead, I mean, you just do whatever you need to do. You can push press it, you can press it. You can snatch it. When it's overhead, that arm is straight. You're actively pushing up. Remember, hip goes out and then you hinge. You keep your eyes up at the bell. Going down just as far as you can. Pushing up. Come up, good. Yes. Good. All right, so that's one side. We're gonna get ready for the other side. Or you can go, you can move right on over. It's up to you. <clears throat> so pay attention. See if maybe one side feels different than the other. This is all just information. We're just gathering the information. We don't really have to do anything with it at this point, but just noticing any differences. Keep pushing. Keep that arm straight. Good. 
Good, rest. We're gonna go back to the other side. You can move up and wait or not. If you are moving up in weight, your reps may get slower. That's okay. Cool. And we're resting. We're gonna go to the other side. So another option, if holding the weight overhead is too much, you can keep the bell at the bottom and you can pull from there. Don't forget to breathe. Okay. Last time each side. We're okay? We're good? Sweet. There we go. Actively pushing that arm up as you come down and as you go up. Push, push, push. Looks really good, guys. Other side. So after this side, we're going to rest for one minute. Still moving with control. This last set should look as nice as your first set did. Maybe nicer. One minute rest. Get your kettlebells ready for swings. It'll be 45 seconds of swings, 15 seconds rest, four times. So we're still resting. And you're gonna to try to get 25 reps in those 45 seconds. We're okay? Okay. <laughs> <Still> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we still got a little bit of a rest here. So we can enjoy the rest. We can just breathe. Because these hundred swings that we have coming up are gonna be spicy. 
They never, they never seem to get easier. We're starting in 15. They never get easier. Set it up. So your swing, you're hinging back. That chest should stay open even as those hips go back. You're coming just up to eye level. Here we go. 25 reps. Good. Nice and close to your zipper if you had zip, if you had jeans on, and then they only leave the body at the last minute. Here we go again. So you want to keep that connection for as long as you can. job. Ooh. Where's that feed? There it is. Okay, we're halfway. So remember, shoulders back. If you had a tattoo across your chest, I should be able to read it in that back position. Here we go. One more time. That'll give you like a two minute break. How are you feeling? We're good? Sweet. Okay. Catch our breath. So you'll need, um, if you can, use one kettlebell for our workout, for our conditioning, as if we haven't done anything yet. <laughs> um, we have alternating cleans, alternating snatches, a kettlebell plank drag, and then some uh, body weight shoot through. So I'm gonna go over everything. 
Um, Matthew, are you okay for cleaning the snatch? Okay. Thomas, you're good? <laughs> Have you done a clean in the snatch before? Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to do alternating cleans. So just a quick note about the clean. I mean, it starts just like a one-arm swing. We're still hinging those hips back. As you clean the belt up, you're keeping that elbow in nice and close. You can imagine maybe you have a newspaper under your armpit the entire time. You don't want that newspaper to fall out. So as you clean the bell up, you keep the arm in nice and close. You want it to have a nice soft landing, which will require you moving your hand around the bell. But that finesse comes with practice. So we just keep doing it. But what we're gonna do for this interval is an alternating clean. So we're gonna clean on the one side and then we go to the other. So with a swing in between. So try a few of those. Yep. Oh, no problem. Good. Cool. Okay, cool. So, and then we're going to do the same thing with the snatch, an alternating snatch. So, we'll snatch it up. You can drop it from the top if you want, or you can bring it back down through that rack position and then switch. So, it's up to you. I like to bring it down through rock, just because I have some tendonitis issues that always seem to flare up when I do it the other way. So try a few alternating snatches if you haven't already. Do you have any questions, anyone? No? Okay, good. Nice. Yep. So when you're snatching that bell up, so like you're thinking fast. You want to get that arm up as fast as you can. All right, then we're going to come to the floor for a kettlebell plank drag. So you're in the high plank position. I'm trying to do it this way. You're in the high plank position. The bell will be like under your chest. I mean, level one, you'll just hold high plank and do an opposite uh, shoulder touch. Or you grab your bell and you pull it across to the other side. Grab the bell, pull it to the other side. So this is abs, abs, abs. Try a few of those. If you need me to do it again. So high plank. Good. Yes. Yes. So watch those hips. Uh, push extra hard through those feet when the arm comes off the floor just to avoid or to minimize the wiggling through the hips. <coughs> We're good with that one? Okay. And then our last one is going to be a shoot through. So there's a couple options here. So me if I do it here. So from the bare position, which we've seen, so the knees are just hovering, that back is straight, you're going to take one foot, shoot it through, and just come down and have a seat. Okay? And then you're going to come back to bare, go to the other side, have a seat, back to bare. Good. Good. Okay, so if that feels good, you guys look like you have that. Let's um let's spice it up a bit. This time, so the foot still comes through, we're still having a seat, but instead of going back through center, 
We're going to push off of this extended foot. Uh, yeah, we push off of that foot and we bring the other leg through to the other side. So this extended leg, we push off of that. The other foot comes off the floor to shoot through to the other side. Yeah, <laughs> if it's too complicated, then you don't have to, yeah. So now pushing off of that extended leg, Thomas, and you're gonna go back through down towards the floor. No, other way. Yeah, and see, and then that leg shoots through. You're almost there. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. Now pushing off of that other leg, going back around through the floor. So you're here. You're going to push off of that right leg. Yes. So this is something you can play with. We're doing five rounds. So you can start with just that basic one. I would suggest going through two rounds just this way, just to warm up that movement pattern. And then when you feel comfortable with it, maybe round three, four, five, you can just start playing with it, okay? So it's just those four exercises, four times. Alternating clean, alternating snatch, plank drags, and those shoot throughs. Let me just Fix my timer. We're starting in 15 with those cleans. So try to keep track of your reps. See if you can maintain the same pace for all five rounds, or maybe you can pick it up. Good. Rest. We're gonna do the same thing for snatches. that fell up as fast as you can. All right, <clears throat> plank drags. All right, here we go. Plank is nice and strong, pushing extra hard into those feet as the hand comes off the floor to drag the bell. So you can move slow here. <clears throat> really want you to stabilize as much as you can through that core and those hips. All right, shoot throughs. So you'll stay, everyone will just stay with version A. Go from our bear, leg goes through, back to bear, sit down. So when you have a seat, think about <coughs> pulling those shoulders back, squeezing the shoulder blades. Let's just make this a full body exercise. Good. Keep it out. Okay, back to cleans. <clears throat> All 
Here we go. Good. Yes. Good. Rest. Snatches. Slow it down here. See how smooth you can make your breath. Keep everything nice and tight. Push through those back toes. See if you can keep that weight under those first knuckles. Arms are straight, straight, straight. again. Squeezing those shoulder blades together as you have a seat. Point those toes. Good guys. All right, rest. Getting ready for snatches. See if you can slow down that breath during the rest. Calm the mind. at the top for a second just to own that overhead position. Rest. All right, we're halfway through this little circuit. Done in seven and a half minutes. Plank drags. Watch those hips. Keep that neck neutral. The neck is an extension of your spine. We want everything to stay straight. Push through those toes. Shoot 
shoot through. So this time, if you want to try switching on that extended leg, shoot through, pushing off of the extended leg. As we transition, we face the floor. Yeah. Ponytail or sweat. Let's do it. Good. Almost there. Good. Get ready for those snatches. Set it up. Here we go. Bracing those abs. Shoot through. And it's just one more round. Totally got this. Choose your level. But it'd be nice if you do the fancy version. Just to play. Doesn't have to be perfect. Oops. See? Really pushing into those arms, keeping the arms straight. doing handstands and cartwheels. If you hear the banging, that's what that is. <laughs> Didn't want you to think something was going on. Clean. guys. Right, snatches. We're close. Here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
you guys. Okay. Legs. Here we go. Pushing through those back toes. Weight under the first knuckles of the hands. Brace those abs. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears. Oh, there's so much going on. All right. This is it. 30 seconds of shoot throughs. And we're done. All right, here we go. onto our back. Knees are bent. Start with the feet flat. So we bring your feet out a little bit wider than hip distance. And let's drop the knees to the right. So you're thinking about that stretch through the front of the left leg. Seeing if you can get that knee to the floor. Beatrice, please stop. Squeeze your glute here or change the position of your foot. We're just really looking for that nice active stretch through the front of the leg. All right, let's take it to the other side. Same thing. We can just let the arms relax. Not too worried about what they're doing right now. All right. Back up to center. Let's cross the right knee over the left. Drop the knees to the left. So that twisting stretch. Those nice windmills that we did today. Those shoot throughs. Those plank drags. All that side stuff. All right, let's go to the other side. So crossing the other knee over, dropping the knees to the other side. So for this one, if you can think about the shoulder blades coming down to the floor, you may be there, you may not, but at least making that intention. All right, bringing the knees back up to center. Let's roll up to seated. And let's just extend one leg. Bring the other foot to the inside of the thigh, inside of the leg if you can. So just sitting up as tall as you can, seeing if you can square your body over that extended leg. For some of us, this may be the stretch. This may be it, which is fine. Or you can think about leaning forward, 
reaching your chin for your toes. And we'll go to the other side. So noticing how different it feels from one side to the next. This doesn't even feel like the same stretch for me on this side. Completely different. So again, this might be your stretch, just sitting up straight. And if you want, you can lean forward. So depending on what's going on with your knee, if you have any knee issues, you wanna, you'll want to play with that position of the foot. up just taking a comfortable seated position of your choice and we'll just stretch that shoulder so crossing the arm in front keeping the shoulders down away from the ears other side All right, and that, my friends, is it. Thank you. That's good. Glad you were here.